In this example, I want to take you through three levels of development of the overall balance scored approach, scorecard approach within uh, a manufacturing company. Now, what we're going to do is take you through the tangible future that we developed with them. Uh, I'm going to take you through the strategy map for the corporate level that we developed and also the technology roadmap that they use to plan out how they were going to run their various projects through the next two or three years. Now, this is a really interesting company. They actually make buildings. Um, when I say make buildings, they actually have a factory where they construct the room they furnish the room, they fit it all out, it's got the carpets, the beds, the, the, um, um, the bathroom, the whole piece and that eventually gets stacked together as a set of modular units on site and then wrapped, clad, roofed to, to make the actual building. It's called mod off-site modular construction. Um, and one of the advantages of it is it's highly sustainable and it gives very good predictability over build times. Now, uh, what I'm going to talk about here, first of all, is how they looked at their future um, <clears throat> before we developed the strategy map itself. And this is a good example of building a tangible future. Now, here's the, the two aspects to a tangible future. You always build an external perspective and an internal perspective. For simplicity, I've put this on the same slide, but normally I do these separately. So you build the external view first and then you ask how are we going to respond. <clears throat> and in this you can see that the external market is about how the market will develop, both in terms of the construction market and the modular market, because to some extent the modular market is quite small relative to construction. We built a time frame up the left hand side and we happen to have a good load of market research. So we populated the um, the predictions of how the markets will develop on the left hand side to provide a frame of reference. Now always when you develop a tangible future you're looking for themes up through it but also time scales. So you've got to think to yourself what time scale are we working over? In this particular situation we were working over a five year time scale. So we did 2005 today as it was, 2006, 2007, 2008 and they wrapped 2009, 2010 together. And therefore then they started to build how they would expect the market and the competition to develop over the next five years. And as they did so they thought about the pressures on the market and they identified a whole collection of these growth in the housing market, pressures on build costs, pressure to reduce CO2 emissions, improving thermal efficiency, uh, reducing waste on site, those sorts of things. Um, here's the theme of how they saw the overall construction market developing from today, where we've put in particular different colours here. Um, grey at the bottom, it's only 1% of the market, so potentially by 2009 being around 3% of the market. And this was their view of how things would develop at the pace they could see it would develop. We look at how the competition and the modular market would develop. Um, they were saying that there are already a number of established competitors and there are existing alliances and by 2007 they're expecting new entrants to come in. By 2008-2009 there are going to be a number of big players in the market and many perhaps small and economical ones. So the question is how do they pace themselves and how do they establish their credibility in that market? So now we look at our response and they're saying that today they've got a relatively low profile, single customer, they're making so much profit, they want to be at a different level by 2009 and they can see that by 2006 they really need to have a proven track record, strong relationships in a couple of markets and working with various companies in partnership. Um, Looking at it in a bit more detail, they want to look internally at how they focus on new markets, better processes, increased content, that's the percentage of the building that they're creating modular. Um, they want to drive value up, uh, lighter, stronger buildings, uh, how many stories they go to so that potentially they move from probably 40% of the building is modular now to potentially 70%. Um, different parts of the market behaving in different ways. Now, as they built this, they could see two crunch points. Um, one is 
was in the, the forthcoming year, which is they have to get early traction in the market to really be able to be sure that they are going to get anywhere in the market. If they don't get traction in the next year or so, their view was other competitors would come in and they would be able to get the game. There's another uh, crunch point, as they put it, in 2007 where they're saying the assumption is if we don't have volume by now we are sunk. So they've got started to build up a clear view of how they see the market developing, their key decision points, how they need to respond to the changes in these, it's actually also the assumptions they're making about how the market will develop. So let's look at their strategy map. Now at the top they've got on the revenue side existing markets as well as new markets and that should grow their EBIT earnings before interest and tax so that they generate cash and actually make a valuable business potentially you know do you sell this off or not or as a separate unit they obviously have to minimize the overall cost of production and be good at working capital and investment now uh, this customer perspective is actually quite complicated uh, when we looked at it because there were a variety of different value, uh, value chains of how they could enter the market but in essence it boils down to there are end users and the consultants they're dealing with and then there are builders and contractors and some of them have shared objectives because both of them want a better way to deliver content uh, deliver building solutions um, and both of them want a valuable building that uh, solves problems and makes a, a, a good uh, building for the people who are occupying it. Uh, and then the builders and contractors, they want to make on-site work predictable. Whereas the consultants, let me be flexible, create what I want as an architect. So there's different demands at different parts of the um, value chain. Now. If you look lower down there, so that's the market they're in, that's the environment and that's how they see the demands of their various customers and partners. Now, you'll notice there's six process objectives, but we've divided them into three themes. The themes are promote our unique capability. The second one is expertise in design and risk management. And the third one is operational excellence. And you'll notice that the um, the blue uh, process um, objectives actually deliberately overlap the themes. And the reason for this is that this organisation were trying to integrate sales into design and design through to manufacturing so that they were much, much slicker. You can imagine if you've got a factory, you've got various designs coming through from the um, design team who are being driven by the architects. So what the uh, salespeople sell to the architects and sell to their end users, somehow you have to design that and make sure that it's designed in a way that can be built to maximize the modular component that you can build in a factory. And the more you can do that, the more you can make it easy for the factory to produce, the more efficient they are. And vice versa, the more flexible the factory is, um, the, the, the more flexibility the designers have. So this is integration of how the pieces fit together. And again we have learning and growth elements so that there are particular ones associated with the promoting the unique capability, um, understanding partners and thought leadership in the design and having an integrated business management continuous improvement capability and uh, understanding the build and install process on the operational excellence. And they had three values, remember they talked about values at the bottom, caring, working together and taking the lead. So here we have a strategy map but he's quite rich at the top level, particularly in the customer perspective. And so one level down, there's quite, we actually had six different versions of the value chains that they might attack in the way construction would go on. And those came down to one or two they ended up working with. Um, but also the process perspective reflects the integration they wanted to achieve. Now, one of the things we then did was look at the uh, tangible future and say what components, what capability they needed to build into the organisation. And they actually built a technology development map. And the reason I'm showing you this is this is a good example of how you create a whole programme of initiatives, projects, uh, that sit investments that sit behind your strategy map 
and so that the delivery delivery program the delivery expectations of this suits the tangible future and you're actually doing a cross-checking of is it is this a realistic schedule now what they did here was develop a one two year time scale here's the market market one market extension one market two market three so they could see themselves moving into different markets for each market they could see that they needed particular things like improving the quality of existing modules or expanding the width of rooms or expanding the volumetric build and therefore there were particular pieces of technology they needed either in design or in the factory that they needed to add and build and develop to make sure that they were in place ready for market 2 penetration and market 3 penetration. So as you can see what we've got here between the tangible future the strategy map and the technology map is an integrated program of an integrated story that works together to explain how this organization only on three pages are going to operate over the next five years the things they have to focus on as a management team and the things they need to develop in terms of their technology strategy map to make sure they deliver it and of course you've got the coordination running between these three so what you should be doing is being able to create a similar sort of story consistently with your, um, your strategy maps and your, your um, technology maps that you're developing with your management team. I will say that as we developed that strategy map, we did it over a couple of days, but I think it might have been two or three workshops in the end, um, but it, that workshop got documented as a complete business plan. So for each of those objectives, here's the characteristics, here's the expectations, here's the responsibilities, and the technology map sat behind it. So it became almost a self-documenting um, exercise, which made it much easier to do the lighter, faster, quicker um, strategic learning piece that they wanted to, um, to do. So quite a lot here in terms of how these, what appears to be three simple diagrams works. Um, and it did have a major change on the way they worked as a team as well. So quite rich from very, very simple diagrams with quite a rich story behind it.